How's it going everyone? My name is True Wonder Dog, and I'm here today with a guide for Dead or Alive 6. A few of you have been requesting this down in the comments section and I completely understand why. Dead or Alive is a very unique fighting game and also very different, which is honestly one of the reasons I love it so much. So without any further ado, let's start the guide. I want to start things off by talking about your offensive options. So first up we have punches and we have kicks. And the frame data is displayed a bit there down below at the very top. As you can see, my punch is 11 frames, and my kick is 14 frames. So typically in Dead or Alive, punches are faster than your kicks. However, kicks tend to have much better range. So if you look at that, my punch is faster, but my kick has more range. Now on top of being a bit slower, kicks also tend to have more stun, so they stagger the opponent a bit easier than your punches. So even though punches are faster, their range isn't as good and their stun tends to be a bit lower. Now of course every character in this game is different, so for some characters they have faster kicks, some characters have faster punches, and of course the input of your attack will also change the speed, so my back punch is a bit slower than my neutral kick. So make sure to spend time in training mode and learn how fast each attack is. And next up we have the throws. Now the throws in Dead or Alive are very, very unique. So as you can see, it's four frames. Every character has very fast throws. Now of course you have the forward throw, but it's still only six frames. And the back throw, how about that? Eight frames. But still, every single one is faster than my neutral punch. And as mentioned earlier, punches tend to be faster than kicks, and throws are even faster still. Now, here's where things get interesting. Most throws in this game will lose outright to an attack. So even though this punch is slower, if I'm in the process of punching you, your throw will not work. It will whiff completely if I'm attacking you. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, which are called offensive holds. So for example, Tina has one. It's forward forward throw. So if the opponent tries to attack me during that throw, my throw will win as long as it connects first. However, most of the time, throws will lose outright to any other attack, even though they are very, very fast. Now you might be wondering, well, does it matter how fast it is if it loses to every attack? Well, yes it does. Because for example, if I'm playing Tina, and I do a risky low attack like this, and you block it, you can do a crouching throw to punish me every single time, because that throw is very, very fast. So if you're not always sure what your fastest punish option is, a throw is a great option because it starts up so quickly. So even though throws typically do lose to attacks, they're great for punishing anything unsafe the opponent does. And in this case, anything unsafe would be minus four or more. So for example, I'll have Mila block real quick, just in case some of you aren't quite sure what safe and unsafe means. So I currently have Mila doing a standing guard. So if I did say a hop kick, up forward kick, as you can see, it's minus 12 on block. So if Mila blocks this, she can throw me right away and get a free punish. But that's not all that makes throws so interesting. Throws will also do far more damage if you land one on the opponent when they're doing a hold. So there are a bunch of holds in this game, right, that I'll go over a bit more in the defensive section. But basically, holds are great for escaping block strings, or even if you're being comboed, a hold can sometimes save your booty. So for example, if I did back punch, 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 she can hold me because she knows that mid punch is coming. She's a very skilled player, you see. However, now I know that Mila likes to do holds, right? She's going to try and escape this string by holding every single time. So now instead, I'm just going to do the one punch. And then when she tries to hold, I'm going to throw her. Now check out the difference in damage here. So here's my standard forward throw. Six frame startup, 58 damage. Not too shabby. But now look at how much damage it does during a hold is going to do a lot more. 92, so almost double the damage. And Tina has some crazy damaging throws in this game. In fact, in one of my ranked matches, I landed her most damaging throw when the opponent tried to do a hold, and it does 50% damage. So half the health bar just gone because the opponent tried to hold and escape a combo. Now that's quite a lot to take in, so let's go ahead and do a brief summary real quick. Punches are typically faster, kicks are a bit slower but have better range, Throws are the fastest, but most of them will lose to attacks, except for offensive holds. So offensive holds will actually beat attacks, but they're a bit slower than your standard throw. And lastly, throws will always do more damage if done when the opponent's trying to hold to escape your combo. That's basically offense in a nutshell in Dead or Alive. So next up, let's talk defense. So let's start off with standard blocking. Now Dead or Alive does have a block button, which is one on the controller, so it's square, or I believe X on the Xbox controller. I'm not sure what it is on the Switch, I apologize for that. But thankfully, you don't have to use a button to block. You can just walk backwards, or down back to block low. And of course, if you want to block low, you can also hold the button and crouch. That will also block low. So to block high attacks and mid attacks, you just block standing. To block low attacks, you crouch. Now keep in mind while crouching, mid attacks will blow you up. 
So this, for example, would catch you trying to crouch. This would also catch you trying to crouch. So crouching is typically not what you want to do in 3D fighting games. You almost always want to block standing, but if you know a high attack is coming, you can duck under it. Or if you know the opponent's going to go for a low, you can block low and almost always punish it with a low throw. However, here's where things start to get really interesting in Dead or Alive, and that's the holds. As mentioned earlier, holds can be good for escaping combos or even escaping the opponent's block pressure. So this game has four different holds by default. So you have the mid hold, which will catch mid punches, that's just back and hold. However, this will not catch mid kicks. If you want to catch a mid kick, you have to do forward and hold. Then you have the high hold. This will catch high kicks and high punches, that's up back hold. And then for low attacks, you have the low hold, which is down back hold. And those are your basic hold options, however some characters have unique holds that do even more damage. So for example, if I know that Mila's gonna do a mid kick, then I can just do a regular mid hold. Against kicks of course, so that's forward and hold. Pretty solid amount of damage, however Tina actually has a back forward hold that also works on mid kicks. And if I land this, I get way more damage. And to make things even better, I leave the opponent standing, which means no wake up attacks for them. So even though every character has access to the same four holds, some characters have unique holds that do even more damage and can be good for screen positioning or setups. So next, let's talk about wake up attacks. So if the opponent knocks you on your butt, you have two different options. You have a regular wake up kick or a low wake up kick. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Mila throw me to make sure I'm on the ground. And if I press kick, Bam, I get a big fast rising mid kick. Now I didn't quite have the range there, but if Mila chose to run up on me, then it would have connected just fine. And then you also have a low wake up kick. To do a low wake up kick, you just hold down and then press kick. Now keep in mind, both these wake up options are fully invincible during the animation, so if Mila tried to do any attack at all there, she would have lost. However, keep in mind, both these wake up options are minus on block, so if the opponent does block correctly, it's now their turn to attack you, and to make matters even worse, they could always go for a hold and then get a lot of damage on you. So sometimes, you don't want to wake up with an attack, you just want to wake up in a certain direction. So for example, I'm gonna have Mila knock me down, and if I press back hold, I get up backward. If I press forward and hold, then I move forward when I get up. And of course the same is true for going up or down. So up and hold, I go that way. If I press down and hold, I go towards the camera. So on top of the two wake up attacks, you can also get up in four different directions. And I believe you can also get up in place as well. So I'll just press the hold button and I stand right up. So if the opponent's trying to pressure you, then a wake up kick can be a great option since they are fully invincible. However, if the opponent blocks it, it's their turn to attack you. And if they land a hold, that's a lot of damage. So if you don't want to risk either of those happening, you can always do a movement option instead, which can be safer sometimes, but it also means you most likely have to block as you get up. So next up, let's talk about the new mechanic mechanics in Dead or Alive 6, because these can be used for both offense and defense. So first up, we have the auto combo. Now by default, I believe this is right bumper or R1 on the controller, but for me, I've actually remapped it to L1. But if you keep pressing this button, you get a short auto combo. And if your meter is actually full, all two bars, you actually end that combo with a super. However, if you don't have the two bars filled, it just finishes the combo. And from what I've seen, you actually can't escape this unless you spend half of your super meter to do a universal hold. So remember how earlier we went over the different holds, how you have the mid holds, the high holds, the low holds, the mid kick holds, and then the unique holds for certain characters? Well, if you don't feel like doing any of that guessing and just want to escape the combo or the opponent's pressure, you can just press back and then that special button. This will cost one entire bar of your super meter, but it's basically a get out of jail free card. However, unlike typical holds, it barely does any damage at all. Which I think is fair seeing as how it's such a brain dead easy way to escape your opponent's combos. Now if you have two bars full, you can press forward and the special button to get your super attack. This attack does a pretty chunky amount of damage, and if the opponent hits the wall, you get even more damage. And to make things even crazier, this attack will also counter any attack that isn't a throw or a low. So high punches, high kicks, mid punches, mid kicks, this super will beat them all if timed correctly. And last but not least, we have the universal sidestep. So if I press up in special, I sidestep up. If I press down in special, I sidestep down. And if I do either one of those movements and press special again, I get a follow-up attack. Now, this sidestep is very good for escaping tons of pressure, especially if the opponent runs in on you and doesn't attack. This can be a great way to slip around that. Just keep in mind sidesteps do not work on throws, not one bit, 
so if the opponent starts sidestepping you a lot, just run up and throw. It's a pretty good option. And also keep in mind that certain attacks can't be sidestepped. And that's about it for the new mechanic, so next let's talk about combos. Now combos in Dead or Alive are very, very unique. Because in Dead or Alive, every attack has a certain amount of stun. And as a typical rule, attacks that are slower tend to hit a bit harder, attacks that are faster tend to not have as much stun. So for example, my high punches here don't lead to a full combo. If I finish that string, she can actually block there, right? But if I land this up back punch, she's completely stunned, so I can now extend my combo and keep it going. And also keep in mind that attacks that normally wouldn't stagger the opponent will do so on counter hit. So for example, my back punch doesn't actually stagger Mila if I hit her with it raw. But if I land it on counter hit, it's guaranteed to stagger her. So let me go ahead and turn on the counter hit settings here. Where's that at? These are in weird locations, I tell you. So now if I land back punch, she's staggered. Now when the opponent's staggered, their only way to escape a combo is by doing a hold. And this is why it's important to always mix up your attack strings. So for example, if I land this, two punches can be a great way to extend my combo, because they're very fast, and oddly enough, when the opponent's staggered, fast attacks can sometimes stun them even longer than a slow attack. So for example, these two punches leave her stunned for quite a long time. However, if I keep going for high punches over and over again like that, the opponent's gonna do a hold on me and eat my lunch. So if that starts happening and the opponent starts holding all your high attacks, you can choose to go for a mid or a low, any number of follow-ups as long as they're fast enough to extend the combo. So for example, I could just do a forward punch. Had the opponent done a high hold there, it wouldn't actually work. And one more thing to note, because I can't just do back medium medium like that, I actually use the hold button to cancel out of that string and go for a forward punch a bit faster. So in other words, if you want to cancel a string, you can use the hold button and then go for the next attack a little bit faster. You normally don't have to do this, but for certain strings it actually becomes essential to use hold to cancel. However, if your opponent's just a defensive god and every hold they do is correct, whether it be guessing or they're just good at predicting you, you can always go for a throw instead, because once again, throws will always beat holds and they also do more damage in that scenario. And then one last important thing to take note of is attacks will sometimes behave differently when the opponent's being comboed. So for example, with Tina, we have her hold plus kick attack. Normally, this attack just staggers the opponent. But if I do it on the opponent after they're staggered, it actually launches them. And it also does this on counter hit as well. And that's typically how things tend to work in Dead or Alive. However a move behaves on counter hit is likely how it's going to behave during a combo, as long as you don't start the combo off with it. And unfortunately, this can be very confusing for beginners, because you think, man, this hold plus kick has a lot of stun. Let me use it to extend the combo, but nope, it launches them high into the air. So that's going to happen quite a lot to you when you start out playing Dead or Alive. You're going to be playing online and think, oh, I'm going to use this move to extend the combo, only to learn that it knocks the opponent away during a combo. Or maybe it launches them, or maybe it knocks them down. But but after playing for long enough, you'll learn what every attack does on regular hit, or during counter hit, or during a combo. And that's honestly about it for the guide everyone. Once again, Dead or Alive is a very unique and very different fighting game, but at the same time, that just makes it stand out from the crowd. Hopefully this short guide gave you a better understanding of how to play the game. If it did, then please leave a like down below, it really does help my channel out a ton. And please request which guides you want to see in the future. And then finally, why not keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell? That way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.